Frida tended the plants in her garden as if they were needy infants. Flowers, fruit she painted so they looked alive, projecting onto them the full force of her obsession with fertility. She wrote, the vegetal miracle of my body's landscape is in you, the whole of nature. I traverse it in a flight that with my fingers caresses the round hills, the valleys longing for possession, and the embrace of the soft green fresh branches covers me. I penetrate the sex of the whole earth. Its heat embraces me, and in my body everything feels like the freshness of tender leaves. Its dew is the sweat of an always new lover, it is not love, nor tenderness, nor affection. It is the whole of life. Mine that I found when I saw it in your hand, in your mouth, and in your breasts. In my mouth I have the almond taste of your lips. Your words have never gone outside. Only a mountain knows the insides of another mountain. At times when your presence floats continuously, as if wrapping all my being, in an anxious wait for morning. And I notice that I am with you in this moment, still full of sensation. My hands are plunged in oranges, and my body feels surrounded by you. In Flower of Life, 1944, Frida projects her obsession with procreation into images of vegetation by transforming tropical-looking plants into male and female genitalia. Moses, 1945, expands the fertility theme to the scope of a history painting. It looks like a miniature mural similar to the frescoes that Rivera painted. The sides of the painting are crammed with gods and heroes. The center scene, Moses' birth, reveals again Frida's preoccupation with fertility, the source of which is the sun. At the bottom, a snail spurts fluid into a conch. An expression of her desire to partake in the flow of the universe is a painting entitled Roots, 1943. It depicts a dream of birth. Frida's body extends over a vast desert terrain. A window opens in her torso, giving birth to a pliant green vine that spreads luxuriantly across the desert floor, Frida's longing for fertility and connectedness. Though childless, she is part of the chain of life. Frida took some comfort in her faith that everything under the sun was intimately linked. Like Rivera, she saw the human body as deeply embedded in the vegetable world, rooted in the earth. In 1931, she showed her view of the cycle of life and death in Luther Burbank, a portrait of the man who developed hybrid fruits. The deceased Demas shows a child that Frida chose to paint because of her personal association of children with death. The painting is in the Mexican tradition of portraiture of the dead that stretches back to colonial times, and Dimas is, according to Mexican custom, dressed up like one of the magi that came to worship the infant Jesus. Frida's preoccupation with death can be seen in the objects that she kept about her house, a painting of a dead child above one of her beds.
skeleton hudasas hanging from another bed. collection of small skeleton puppets. In her diary are sketches of dancing skeletons. In her painting, The Dream, Frida sleeps in her four-poster bed, dreaming of a time long after death when plants would sprout from her grave. She pairs herself with a skeleton in the form of a hudas, which is entwined with wires and explosives. At any moment, it could explode, making Frida's dream of death a reality. This preoccupation with death is expressed again in a painting called Thinking About Death, 1943. An opening in Frida's forehead reveals her thoughts, a skull and crossbones set in a miniature landscape. Like many Mexicans, Frida saw death as a fact of life, something to be faced head on and accepted. In Mexico, death is festive and funny. Octavio Paz observed, the word death is not pronounced in New York, in Paris, in London, because it burns the lips. The Mexican, in contrast, is familiar with death, jokes about it, caresses it, sleeps with it, celebrates it. It is one of his favorite toys and his most steadfast love. Mexicans celebrate death in a festival called the Day of the Dead. Sugar skulls are eaten. You can order one with your name on it. Tombs are decorated with yellow flowers. Meals and offerings are prepared to be shared with the dead in an overnight celebration at the cemetery. The Mexican attitude towards death is best exemplified in the work of the great printmaker, Jose Guadalupe Posada, who popularized images of mocking skeletons, dancing, singing, and laughing. One of Posada's skeleton characters, the Calavera Catrina, appears in a mural that Rivera did called Dream of a Sunday Afternoon in the Central Alameda Park. The skeleton appears in the mural holding the arm of Posada on one side and Rivera's hand on the other. Posada was given a prominent position because Rivera claimed he was his chief artistic mentor. Rivera himself appears as a fat, devilish boy. Behind him is Frida, shown as a mature woman a head taller than Diego. She holds a yin-yang symbol, which represents the male-female duality which she felt underlay all life. Her right hand rests protectively on Diego's shoulder. Far from the subordinate role that Frida depicted in her marriage portrait, Rivera presents his wife in a maternal role. In 1934, Rivera had an affair with Frida's sister, Cristina. 
he painted Christina in a fresco in the National Palace. Her eyes have that blank, orgasmic expression that Rivera reserved for women with whom he was sexually infatuated. When Frida learned of Diego and Christina's betrayal, she wrote, I am in such a state of sadness, boredom, etc., that I can't even do a drawing. The situation with Diego is worse each day. Frida painted almost nothing during the period when Rivera was involved with Christina. In 1935, she painted a few small nips in which she projected all her own agony onto another woman's calamity. The painting is based on the newspaper account of a drunken man who stabbed his girlfriend 20 times. He innocently protested, but I only gave her a few small nips.